Hi everyone, Mrs. LaRue here, and I want to show you today how to use Noodle Tools. And if you are using this in a class and ever have any issues with it, please just come see me in the library and I'm happy to help you. And that's why I left the camera on so you could see who I am, but I'm going to turn it off now so um, I can focus on what I'm doing here. Okay, to use Noodle Tools, um, you need to make sure you're logged into your school account. Now, usually you can go to your mail or drive or something like that and click the Google Apps Waffle, scroll down and click the um, Noodle Tools logo and it logs you in. But for some reason lately, students were getting this error message and it has something to do with Google Changes recently where it is um, not allowing you to log in that way. So there are two workarounds to that. One is just um, go to noodletools.com, click login, and choose that you want to log in with your Google account. Or if you go to the library page um, by going to learning resources and library, um, this link there takes you to the login for Adams 12 as well. Uh, this drop down menu with the arrow will give you more help pages, videos, and help. Um, tools for specific things with Noodle Tools, as well as the step-by-step -step directions you see here. And this will kind of walk you through this. Now, if you use Noodle Tools last year, you probably need to update your graduation year. If you've never used it, you'll have to first um, go to your account setup you'll see, and then choose Mountain Range High School under location. Choose that you are a student or a library patron. And then this is where you will see um, this next image. So this next page is what you'll see where you put in Mountain Range High School again and then what year you will graduate. And I'm thinking that both current students and um, that used Noodle Tools and new to Noodle Tools students will need to do this. Once you click that, um, you should get logged in and you're going to start with new project. So here I am logged in. I have a couple of projects started. Um, but to get started on something new, and again, you would do a new project for every paper you're doing or, or a presentation you're doing that you have to create a work cited for, each one would be a new project. So come over and click the green button that says new project. Give it a title. I'm just going to put today's date in here. And then you've got options. Um, most of the time you will use MLA for the way you cite things. Depending on what subject you do, your teacher may be asking you to switch to APA. But if your teacher doesn't say anything, I would stick with MLA. And then if you were just using like books and websites and that's it, you can uh, switch to a starter level, but you can also leave it at, as the advanced level. And that just gives you more types of things you'll be citing. I'm going to leave it as advanced for right now, but you can switch it to junior or starter if you're just using um, a few things or need that accommodation. So let me click submit. Okay, so here is um, that project I just created. If your teacher asks you to share it to an inbox, under sharing, there's a plus sign, you would click plus. Your teacher will tell you the name of the inbox. So you would just click um, that you wanna share it with an inbox, start typing in that teacher's name, I'm not going to get anything show up. I just know that she was using this with her class and I hope something would show up. Um, but you would type in the project name. You have to get that from your teacher and then hit done. But I'm not sharing with an inbox now and you don't have to do that unless your teacher asks you to. That just lets your teacher see your work in progress and give you feedback along the way. So to add sources to your list here, you would open up your project. And then you've got different things within that project. Your sources are obviously the sources you're using for research. Um, there is a note card option here where you can create note cards to organize your research. Um, you can attach things here as well, um, like files that you have that are outside of um, your project, like a PDF you have or something like that. Um, your teacher may share links with you, especially if it's with a project, but I wanna focus right now on sources. So to get started, you're going to click new source. And then this is where you choose what are you trying to cite? If it is a something you have in hand, like a book, you would choose that print or in hand and find what it is in the list. If you're choosing a database, um, I will show you uh, in a video that is linked in this description of this video, how to cite databases because two of our databases 
will let you copy or not um, export directly from the database here. But for today, I'm going to show you how to cite a website. So I clicked website and I just want to cite um, this crazy article I found about um, pizza being recalled over allergy concerns. So I'm going to say that this is just a web page. You could probably even choose it's an, um, like an article or something like that, but I'm just going to cite it as a web page. So you just then fill in as much as you can. And if you go back to the directions here and scroll down to this yellow box, at a minimum, you need to try to get your URL, which is your address, the date it was written, and the date you looked at it, which would be today, the name of the article or the web page you're looking for, which is like the, the small thing, and then the website is the big um, uh, holder of this information, and then the publisher, if you can find that. But note here, it tells you if the publisher is the same as the name of the website, you can leave publisher blank, and Noodle Tools will tell you that as well. So I want to go back to my article, and the first thing I saw on my list was my URL. So I'm going to copy that URL and paste it in. And then the next thing is the date. I know I'm looking at it today, so I'm going to go ahead and click today. But I'm looking for when this article was written. And there it is, September 28th. This was actually written today as well. So I'm going to put in today's date, September 28th, 2021. And then anything else, if you can find it, um, if I see an article, there is the name of my person. I'm going to copy her name, the author there, and I'm going to go ahead and change it to author. I'll paste it in, but I don't want to leave it capitalized, so I'm going to just fix that. And then I can delete, oh, I can just type it here too, R -E -I -S -S and then delete it from here. And then go back and look for the name of your article title. Now, if your article does not have a title, you would just click this box and click um, type in your own description of what you're reading. But this does have an article title here. So I want to copy that. Thousands of pounds of DiGiorno frozen pizza have been recalled over allergy concerns. Copy that and paste it in under the name of the article. So again, you've got your name of your article versus your name of the big website. And so my website I'm using is NPR. And um, if you notice there was an error that popped up that told me that I didn't need to use of or over and I should be capitalized, capitalizing those. So I am gonna go back, even though they're capitalized in the article, um, you could do that any, either way. You could leave it since that's the way the article had it, but I know it's better. Not to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete that. The name of my website is NPR, and for the publisher of your website, that's like the big group that is over the entire website. If I scroll down to the bottom, my guess is it's probably going to be NPR, but let's see. Uh, let me hide that menu real fast. Yep, so there's a copyright date there of 2021, and it says NPR. So because my publisher is the same name as the website I'm using, I can leave publisher um, blank. And it tells you here that you can leave it blank if it's the same name as the uh, website. So um, I don't have an editor on there. If you need to add an annotation, if your teacher is asking you to do that, you can type that here. But once you have everything um, included, go ahead and click Save. Once you have all of your sources in here, um, you're able to print it. So there is a print export button here. If you click the printer, just click that. Click you want to um, save it or print or export it to a Google Doc. And if you tagged anything on here, you can include it with that, but I did not tag anything. That would be if you wanted to um, call something a primary source. Um, you know, like a, a document from that time period, a secondary source, like mine would be a secondary source here because it's an article about something else. Um, but I did not tag anything. And if you color coded anything, you can add those, but I am not doing that. I'm just going to click submit. And it takes just a second for Noodle Tools and Google Docs to work together. Um, you can rename this if you like to, but it will name your project sources for 
and then whatever you called your project. And remember, I just called mine, oops, today's date. So mine is called sources for today's date. It prints it out um, or exports it into the correct format for printing with the Times New Roman font, 12 point size, one inch margins, um, work cited at the top, and then my uh, citation is written correctly here. And if I had multiple citations, it would put them in alphabetical order. So that is how to use Noodle tools. If you want to use, use it for a database, um, click the link that is inside this video description for how to do that. And if you have any questions, uh, please come let me know. Thanks.